Hello there, I'm Helen Noble, Sullivan of Surrey, founder of Swansong and co-founder of the Healthy Marriage Success Guide. Welcome to my channel. Each week I give you tips and tricks and interesting insights or observations or just useful info for all things ceremony. This week I'm exploring the difference between a registrar, a vicar and a celebrant. Is a celebrant a vicar? Is a celebrant a registrar? There are similarities, so let's go dive in. So, according to Google, lots of you will Google, is a celebrant the same as a vicar? Now, there are similarities, there are major differences, but all in all, there are more similarities than differences, but the differences are the maker or breaker of why you would choose a celebrant or a vicar. So with a vicar, they are ordained. They will marry you in the eyes of God and they are blessing your nuptials through the word of the Lord and they will bless you in the name of the Lord. So they are the channel of the big man. Um, and if you do want to get married in the eyes of God and have a blessing that is given to you through the word of God, then a priest, a vicar is your person. It doesn't actually have to be a vicar, um, but it does have to be someone ordained. It might be, or training to be ordained. It might be a curate. So some things to watch out for, if you've chosen a church, a bit like the registrars, they might have a team. And so you might not get the person you think you're getting. You might be going to that church and going, yeah, love the vicar, really nice girl, lady, woman, man, whatever, uh, really nice person. Um, yeah, I'm totally happy for them to take our wedding. But it might be that that vicar has a team of priests that a couple are training, um, a couple might be lay priests, so they might have retired, or they might have trained and been ordained, but never wanted to run a venue. So vicars belong to that church, they belong to that venue. So they can only take weddings in their church. Is a little bit ridiculous, and I do feel for the vicars, because I got married in the church and it was a really glorious day. I was like, oh, can we do it at the churchyard? It's like, no, I'm not allowed. I was like, what? Um, they are only allowed to marry their parishioners under their roof in their church. You can't even do it in the churchyard. You can't do it, say you've been going to that church all your life. So for me, for example, I was christened there. My parents got married there, like whole life history. Like he knew we weren't going anywhere. Um, and had I wanted a garden wedding, he would not have been able to marry us in the garden, even though he is a priest and a vicar, and he knows that we aren't just doing it because the venue is good looking. Um, but the rules of the Church of England are that vicars can marry you in their own church, in their own venue. It doesn't mean that you get that vicar of that church, but you will get a person, whoops, my light just fell down. Give me one sec. Uh, that's better because it's a beautiful sunny day outside, but the, it's just gone behind a cloud. So that was for continuity. Ha 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 ha. So you would get somebody from that team that the vicar would have decided and delegated, and probably more often than not, probably only one in a hundred would have told you. So the one being they might not have told you. So you think you're getting married by a particular person, then a different person turns up. Um, so do check if you are getting married in church that the person you think is marrying you is the one that's rotated on for your big day. So just don't assume it's the person that you think it is, because it might be their deacon or the person that's looking after their venue while they're on summer holidays, or someone training or someone that's trained and retired but still can take weddings. So that's important. Vicars can only marry you in church. Vicars can only marry you in their church unless they get permission from another vicar, for example. Um, 
and it will be someone from the team that can take the wedding it might not be the person that you assume it's going to be so do check those out but they will sanctify the marriage in the eyes of god which i'm not ordained so as a celebrant i can't do that so that is the big difference the big difference is i cannot do it in the name of the lord but because I am an independent celebrant and not a humanist, so humanist celebrants bring their own doctrine. They are humanists. They belong to the Humanist Society, which is a charity, and they have their own doctrine. So they would bring that to the wedding. And if you're a humanist, that's your winner. I'm an independent celebrant, so I belong to you, the couple. So whatever you want to bring to that wedding, you're like, we want to make space for faith, but we don't want a church wedding, but we would like Granny Pip to say a prayer. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Because anyone can bless you. Like you sneeze and you go, oh, God bless. Um, it's nice to have a blessing. It's nice when people say, oh, bless you. You're like, oh, thanks so much. Um, so anyone can invite a blessing. So I could read a blessing or write one for you. It might be a family member would write one. It might be, um, I did my parents' Ruby wedding anniversary a decade ago now, um, and it was in our back garden, but they are quite heavy, very good, very diligent churchgoers. Um, so, oh, I'm vice vicar, of course, but I knew he couldn't preside in the garden. Um, so I just said, I'd really love you to write a prayer for mum and dad. Um, could, and could you come and can you say it? So he did and he did and it was lovely. Um, so you can invite a blessing, you can write a prayer, we can put that in. Um, because as an independent celebrant, I will make space for faith if you wish. As a humanist celebrant, they wouldn't do that. Um, so that's the other similarity or big shift, however way you look at it. Um, for registrars, they are not allowed to make space for faith because it has to be 100% agnostic and equal and fair and politically correct. So they cannot and are not allowed to be biased in any way or show favour to a school of thought other than the law of the land which is why their language is, you know, by the powers invested in me by Hampshire County Council or Surrey Registrar Office, however they want to phrase it, they keep the ceremony completely neutral, politically correct and lovely. There's some very lovely non-spiritual, non-belief, non-religious, whatever you want to call it, um, words and poems out there. Uh, the wedding I took the other day, I was sharing with the registrar and uh, he said, I know we're going to your, we're going to hand over to Helen and there's going to be lots of gorgeous ceremonial things. Um, but I just wanted to pop, pop, pop in some words from um, a poet, if you'll allow me. And we were like, of course. So he uh, had lived a bit, went off, went off down a tangent and, and read a lovely poem and was just so sincere and lovely. I was like, oh, bless, you can tell he really wants to be a celebrant. He was like, oh. Um, so, but he has his restrictions because he's not his own boss and he doesn't belong to the council. He will have a superintendent and he has more than one wedding to go to. He may have come from a wedding, he has your wedding, and then he goes on to another wedding. Um, so that's why they're a lot more strict with time. Dum, 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 dum. Again, as an independent celebrant, I only book one wedding a day and I am with you usually for at least three hours. If I'm on host duty, I'm there for six, We'll go. Um, and a, a vicar wouldn't do that, nor would a registrar. They come, they do their bit, and they go. Um, but as a celebrant, on celebrant duty, I'm three hours because I'll be there an hour before. I'll give you an hour space the ceremony, however that looks, and then I can hang out and help and do whatever for an hour. I'm usually an hour and a half, and then an hour, and then an hour and a half. Yeah, it's all a bit bits and match. See what see what works for you guys. Um, so that is making space for faith. As I mentioned before, it's also about where you get married for location. So to recap, a vicar can only marry you in their church, in their building that they are vicar of. If they want to be a guest at a wedding somewhere else, they can always come up and do a blessing because they are a priest and they can bless you 
but they cannot marry you in the name of the Lord somewhere other than their venue. Little bit ridiculous, but law of the land layered upon the Church of England laws makes for a bit of restriction for lovely vicars. Then the third thing, so we've done making space for faith. Is it in the name of the Lord or is it not? We're doing location. Can they marry you inside or outside? Um, priests can only, vicars, priesthood is the calling, vicar is the job. Um, vicars don't assume are the ones that are going to marry you. It might be part of their team. So check on that. And with the celebrant, when you hire me, it's me. You're going to get me. Um, so that's uh, another point. And then the final point I would say is the content. So I mentioned before, anyone can do a blessing. You can invite a blessing. You might want one written, the vicar, if he's a guest. I've had loads of guest vicars, actually, when they've always come up and gone, oh, it's so nice not to be in charge and just enjoy a wedding. Um, but they would do a wedding blessing or they might bless the rings or, you know, whatever. We mix it up. It's all very lovely. Um, and when I've mixed it up with the registrars, it's also very lovely. So you can do a hybrid. <laughs> Love a hybrid. It's all good. Um, but the other thing to mention, as I said, is content. If you are getting married in a church, you do have to have at least one Bible reading. It's kind of down to the discretion of the vicar, but the guidelines, I mean, the guidelines say make it completely religious, but most vicars have eased and said you tend to have two readings, one of them does need to be from scripture and the other one can be anything you like but just run it past me first to double check um, and so that's where the vicar's got a little bit of flexibility and can deliver more of what you want if you don't want full-on scripture throughout your wedding in church i easy breezy lemon squeezy you can have whatever you like so um we tend to have quite a few song lyrics sometimes. Who do we use? Bob Dylan, uh, David Bowie, he's got some good lyrics. Bob Marley, he's got some great lyrics actually. Um, so we use lyrics quite a lot for the readings. There are poems, plenty of poems, sometimes and fairly often actually, because I make space for faith, we will have a reading from scripture. It might not be Christianity, it might be another religion, but there will be space and a place for scripture should you wish to have it and i'm all for that because i belong to the couple unlike the vicar who belongs to the church or the registrar that belongs to the council i belong to you so you can have what you like the only caveat is i can't do it in the name of the lord or by the law invested in me because i'm not legally binding you go do your grown-up bit do your marriage 48 pounds 15 minutes wednesday morning at weybridge uh, and then I'm all ceremony wherever you like. Um, so, and then the final thing is music. And this again is down to the person holding the wedding. If you are having a registrar, the registrars need to see your lyrics. You cannot just choose a song or just choose a track that you're gonna walk up the aisle to without getting it vetted by the council registrar. They have to check all those things I said before, that it's impartial, it's PC, it doesn't show bias to one religion or another. It has to just be some nice words. Um, so make sure you do that. If you've chosen a song to walk up the aisle to and it has lyrics, those lyrics need checking. You need to submit them to the council. If you're having a song, those lyrics need checking. If you're getting married in a church, you would tend to have church music. Um, if you wanted to bring in your own instrumentalists, otherwise known as musicians, Helen, I don't know why I said that, um, then you can. Obviously, I'm a kind of go hard or go home type thing. So I had a massive organ and a trumpet, because I love brass, uh, and full on choir and full on bells doing the firing. So it was, it was a big blah blah. Fabulous. Um, and I've just taken a funeral with a saxophone player and it just filled the room and it was awesome. And I love and will always advocate live music. It is brilliant. Um, but 
I'm not the venue manager. So you need to check with your venue and that might be your church. So you might want to say to your church, I've got a choir I belong to. I really want them to sing. Is that okay? On paper, it should be okay, but it's down to the discretion of the vicar. If he has a church choir that he's, I don't know, promised every sermon, I don't know, he might say, we've actually got our own choir, no. I doubt they will, because even at the coronation, uh, they didn't have just the Abbey choir, they had a gospel choir come in, which didn't belong to the Abbey. It was a freelance gospel choir. Um, and they were lovely and they added an extra an extra vibe and another layer it was it was a great it was a great energy um so i would be very surprised if your priest said no because even king charles did it at the coronation brought in his own choir um so it's always worth asking it might be you've got a saxophone player in the family it might be you have a niece that can play the flute and she's only eight but she really wants to do it and we're all just going to go oh yeah that'd be lovely and then she'll be practicing for months and it will be lovely and she will mem remember that forever and um, so it is always worth asking as a celebrant easy breezy lemon squeezy as i said we can have any music you like so we've had gospel choirs church choirs um chamber choirs all the choirs. I've had saxophones, cellos, duets, quartets. Haven't had an organ. Have had to bring a long keyboard piano. Um, have had a squeeze box. That was fun. Um, have had a drum kit. Have had at funerals a few electric guitars because I do quite a lot of musicians, so that's always fun. Um, so I'm. I'm all for it, but you will need to check with the venue and who runs the venue and whether that's okay. So that might be a priest um, or a vicar, I should say, because vicars are the venue managers of the church. A priest is your calling. Um, if you're a registrar, again, music wise, if it hasn't got lyrics, they don't object because music is music and it's all very lovely. But if it's got lyrics, then you do need to let them know. But instrumental wise, it's fine. It just depends on the venue that you're actually getting married because actually the registrars don't, that's not their venue. They're coming to take the marriage, all things legally binding to the marriage, and then they leave again. So you just need to have a conversation with the venue as to whether you can bring instruments or bring your own choir, bring your own, just bring your own. So technicalities aside, venue, instruments, wording, blessings, Word of God, not Word of God, making space for faith, bringing your own doctrine, all the stuff I've covered. That aside, we sort of all look the same to the people that don't know all the jiggery pokery that's been going on uh, beforehand or underneath it all. Essentially, we are in the room, holding the space, we welcome everybody, you come in, we take the ceremony, it's all smiles, it's all glorious, and then we say congratulations Mr and Mrs, um, or the happy couple, however you want to be announced, and then you walk down the aisle and they're done. So from a observational point, if you're just a wedding guest, it's kind of makes no difference to them. They're like, oh, it's a vicar standing at the top saying some nice things. It's a registrar at the top saying some nice things. It's a celebrant at the top saying some nice things. Obviously, the celebrant standing at the top is saying bespoke, tailor-made, crafted script for the couple, about the couple, completely orientated around the couple. Not the big man himself, and not the council, just 100% the couple and their values and the friends and family gathered there that day. So, in short, to the naked eye, apart from the different outfits, vicar, registrar, celebrant, all sort of look like they're doing the same thing. Um, but what they can do, what they're legally allowed to do, what their doctrine lets them do, what you would ask me to do, does have different levels and varies in a variety of ways. So, have a re-listen to the video, let it all sink in because there was a lot in there. And if you need to pick my brains, just send me a DM. You can find me on Instagram, Celebrant of Surrey, 
You can find me for more funeral stuff on Swan Song with Helen Noble, also on Instagram. You can find me here and you can find me on my website, helennoble.co.uk. Hope that was helpful. Lots of love and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye for now.